Good afternoon. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm thankful to the organizers of this event, particularly Dr. Garg, who is a dear friend. And I have another uh, dear friend uh, in Mr. Sodi here. And uh, I mean, it's a great pleasure. Uh, Mr. Bassi is also there. We know each other for a long time. So it's a great pleasure for me. Uh, one small hitch is that our time is very, very limited, as you are seeing, that it's getting sliding, sliding. So we have to arrest that slide, otherwise it would be very difficult for the organizers also. So I have been told uh, to set that tone. I won't take any more time when, uh, you know, uh, saying other things. I'll straight away uh, go to the topic. So today, as uh, the announcer has already mentioned, uh, the topic is water waste, wastewater treatment, recycling, and reuse. So of course, it's a very technical subject. <clears throat> but of course, we don't have the time to discuss uh, technology per se in uh, great detail. So what we are going to do is how, with the help of different technologies, rather appropriate technologies, we can really make things happen. So what really would work on the ground, what really is going to move the, you know, the situation, because water and wastewater, they are closely related. In the previous section and in the, uh, in the uh, inaugural also, we have heard about water and all. So we have to see how best we can do, and uh, we have to be practical in our uh, you know, dispensation here. So as uh, I have been told to make a small presentation to set that tone, so we are fortunate to have four distinguished speakers in this session. I don't regard myself as a distinguished person, but anyway. So we will discuss one of the most crucial issues of our times, wastewater management, which is closely related to water. Now here we are not going to talk only about the wastewater generation, collection, or treatment as such, but its management, which means everything together. However, the common objective is health and hygiene, saving money, and saving precious water. Now, wastewater is important on two counts. Its appropriate treatment and disposal is essential for our health and environment. And if treated properly, wastewater can become a resource for secondary water use, which we have been discussing in the uh, in, in the inaugural session also, partly. Now my next slide is on-site sanitation for saving uh, resources. Oh, so minimum water, or as we were also discussing about on-site, you know, uh, treatments, etc. So on-site sanitation is one way of saving water. Now, wherever applicable, of course, wherever applicable, that's that's the uh, you know, that's the condition, wherever applicable. I'm, I want to flag it. It may not be applicable everywhere, but wherever applicable, on-site sanitation systems have a couple of advantages. What are those advantages? Less overall cost, less requirement of water, prospect of use of residual nutrients, and direct control of the users over the system, because it's in a smaller area. So some popular systems are twin pit toilets, septic tanks, VIP, and you know VIP means not uh, the very important person, but ventilated improved pit toilet. It can be double as well than biosand toilets, bio toilets, as was developed by DRDO. Now the next one is it's a uh, you know a, a small drawing of uh, a twin pit toilet. I'm not going to dwell upon this. Because this you can find, this is about uh, the bio toilet developed by DRDO. I have given these examples to show that uh, things can be done in a very limited area. It can be even for one household, it can be for a cluster of households, and so on. Now, wastewater management is essential for controlling pollution. We all know that, we have been discussing about that. 
Now this can be categorized into municipal, domestic, and commercial, or trade and industrial. All of these need to be disposed of in scientific manner, because it's not that, see, if we, if we live in a town, for example, all these kinds of wastewater is generated. It can be municipal, it can be industrial, and it can be trade, and so on. But they all impact our lives. All of these need to be disposed of in scientific manner. Now, wastewater from whatever source can be a source of severe environmental <coughs> pollution and a health hazard. So appropriate disposal is very, very important. Of course, my presentation here is a very small one. This uh, is basically on municipal wastewater. Now, recycling and reuse of wastewater. Here, there is something interesting. You see, the world of wastewater management has moved a full cycle in about 100 years. The journey started with the ubiquitous septic tank in 1860, moved up to increasingly centralized a large sewerage system, which we thought was possibly the pinnacle of success. But it involved more water, more energy. So we thought, I mean, we, we could see the limit, and we could see it failing also in places. Now, the kind of planning and executing capability required to construct hundreds of kilometers of civil lines and maintain them for three to four decades is not happening in developing countries. Now, there are other issues also which I'm going to uh, mention here. You see, the in subsequent uh, slides, I will do that, so I, I won't take more time. Well, what are the treatment technologies? Now, we have gone up to the centralized one. We'll discuss about the decentralized a little later. Now, treatment of sewage is broadly categorized into primary and secondary. <coughs> Tertiary treatment systems have also been developed, but they are rarely used. If you look at India, there would be one or two places. In Chennai, they were trying to do this, <coughs> tertiary use and then use it in industry. Primary treatment is very simple. It's screening using suitable screens, such as bar screen, which is one of the most, uh, you know, most common one for removal of coarse materials, such as grits. And the secondary treatment is the main part of sewage treatment. Examples in the next slide. And finally, of course, disinfection of the treated effluent is required, right? So what are the secondary treatment systems? Before that, I will uh, just meant to want to mention about this small uh, you know, development after we reached near Pinnacle. You know, there's a famous book by Duncan Mara, actually D. Duncan Mara. So he was from the University of Dundee. Now, in 1976, he wrote a book, and that opened a new chapter. Fortunately, he had visited our facility in Patna, in Bihar. Now, in this book, Duncan Mara broached the subject of waste stabilization ponds, aerated lagoons, oxidation ditches, high-rate biofiltration, and effluent reuse. So this means he started with the possibilities in decentralized manner, particularly in warm climates, where the biological treatments would be much more, I mean, the, the microbes which would be much more comfortable without any external conditioning of the environment. So that is there from 1976, this started, I mean, looking at the biological treatment and looking at the decentralized systems. And in developing countries, there were two big advantages. One was sunshine and warmth. The second, of course, is uh, was there, but now it is shrinking. That is availability of land. Now, the biological systems, they need more land. But that is now shrinking. Root zone technology has further been added to this. And then the bandwagon moved on to small bore sewer. Here, of course, this is also extremely useful, but unfortunately, very little has happened in our country. 
small bore sewer can be very, very useful for areas which are congested, which are kind of a postscript to development, because that is very common in this country. I mean, we have very uh, few cities which are completely planned and it stops there. It doesn't happen. It goes on increasing, goes on increasing. So for those postscript development, small bore sewer could be a good, uh, good system. Now what are the treatment systems which are there at present for large scale sewage treatment plants? I'm not going to discuss them in detail because each of them would take maybe an hour at least. Yes. Anyway, so activated sludge process, which is very commonly uh, mentioned as ASP, trickling filter, these are old technologies now, extended aeration, upflow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor, UASB. So this is also pretty old, uh, 1979 to 81. So these were all developed. Sequential batch reactor or SBR, moving bed biofilm reactor, MBBR, membrane bioreactor, MBR. These you would find in our sewerage systems, even now, they are pretty common, but they are combinations. We do combine them with other smaller systems or larger systems to make them more effective. Uh, look at the last line. So combinations have been worked out for higher efficiency. For example, USB plus ASP, USB plus trickling filter and so on. And of course, land disposal is there. Now, <coughs> In our high aspiration of having a sewage system everywhere, we tend to forget the basic premises on which the system is based. That is what I was trying to mention a couple of slides back. Minimum 100 liter per capita per day. Water avail availability would be required. Proper plumbing. We have a plumbing expert also over here. So he would appreciate this. Plumbing for or laying sewer lines for a kilometer or 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, how big a challenge is. And the problem is you go deeper or you have lift pumps everywhere so that you can move further. So we have to, we have to remember these boundary conditions when we do design the sewage treatment plants. Then they have to be made leak proof. Then finally we have to have, we have to arrive at a sewage treatment plant, which we discussed a little earlier. Now, the issue of operation and maintenance for the sewer line as well as the STP, these are big issues. Delhi, for example, has 17 sewage treatment plants. If you go around and visit each of them, you will, I don't, I won't, uh, you know, <laughs> detail, of the, detail them as such, but if you go there, I'm sure you won't be satisfied with even half of them. Either the design or the actual operation, everything. I mean, things are there, lot to be desired. So, how do we deal with the situation? Fortunately, it has been realized that reversing the trend from centralized to decentralized may have the answers for specific situation. At the same time, there has been a shift towards reducing energy requirement by depending more on biological processes. Now countries with predominantly tropical climate of course has this advantage. Fortunately the latest government of India uh, manual on sewage treatment plan that is called manual on sewerage and sewage treatment systems published in 2013 they have included the decentralized systems. Okay. Now I won't go uh, to the full of this. <coughs> the development of decentralized systems. Some of the options could be septic tank, biogas plant, DWATS. DWATS is decentralized wastewater treatment system. We have a DWATS society in Bangalore. But uh, actually, we had, st I mean, I was a part of that when we brought it to this country in the year to 1994. Now then, there is soil biotechnology, which was developed by IIT Bombay, and then stabilization ponds, which has been mentioned earlier. <coughs> now this is a comparison of the land uh, requirement. I think I don't need to read uh, them. 
possibly this would be distributed. So you can see from septic tanks 0.5 square meter per cubic meter per day to the constructed wetland 30 square meter per cubic meter per day. So there is a balance, there's a trade-off. Put in more energy if you want to shrink the land. If you want to put in less energy, you have to, you know, have more land. And you have to have help of nature, help of sunshine, help of air. So you have to see how best to design to the best, you know, possible situation. This is the, this is just a, <coughs> you know, a, a, one of the biogas plants linked to a public toilet complex. This is in our premise in Mahaviri Enclave, New Delhi. This is treatment of the effluent, which we called SET, or SULAV, effluent treatment systems. So we have uh, developed this in a way that the final treated water has a BOD of 10, which can be, you know, in uh, used in many ways. Our experience with uh, DWATs, I think I would limit to that and then uh, maybe I would skip this. Actually, this was uh, done in 1994, uh, wherein uh, a number of organizations were there. You see, the uh, BORDA was one of the main organizations. Then there were Chinese organizations from India. We were there. And then uh, there was this uh, Kerala organization. And uh, we had had eight numbers of uh, DWATs. They were good. And we had a very, I mean, see, DWATs is a very, uh, it's a very flexible technology. You aren't given any prescription that this is the thing. Mm. You have to design as per your situation. That's the beauty of DWATs. And, you know, you have that flexibility. So DWATs could be a good answer for localized systems. Now, what is the way forward? There are two important issues for wastewater management, availability of tap water and all weather proper drainage. See, I have been <coughs> In my 40 years of uh, actual work in this area, I've had uh, more than 11, 12 years of on-hand practical experience after my retirement from the government. <coughs> now, drainage is one of the biggest issues, whether you are working with wastewater treatment or solid waste management. Without that, any treatment facility is absolutely a big problem then planning capability. <coughs> this is the most important factor. Planning capability for developing a sustainable plan for disposal of wastewater, followed by capability for preparing tenders and execution, and ultimately operation and maintenance on a long-term basis. They are required. Capability only to make the plan is not sufficient because after all, the tenders have to come. You have to judge the tenders. The tenders have to be executed and finally they have to be operated for the total concession period of 20 to 30 years. So all those are part of the planning capability. So all the stakeholders must be involved during the planning exercise as well as the execution period for long-term success. So thank you from my side now. <coughs> now we have about 45 minutes and we have three colleagues here. But I would request uh, if you could limit in about 10 minutes then we can have some time for you know, discussion, question and answer. <coughs> so Sorisa, can I request Absolutely. you?